Today, we're gonna to talk about the avionics. Now on the avionics, I chose to have the installation done by my good friend, Rob Hicks at Umbrella Aviation. Rob's out of the Glendale Airport in Glendale, Arizona, about 50 miles from me. Trailered the fuselage down to him back in, when was it, October, I think, uh, early October. And it took him about, uh, I don't know, maybe six or eight weeks. And uh, he finally got, all, got it all done for me. He did about 99% of it. There was just a little bit uh, that I still came in and did, and then I did all of the firewall forward. Firewall forward is coming up in the next episode. I was gonna do the avionics myself, and it was just one of those things where, the more I thought about it, I wanted a professional to do it. I know when a professional is gonna do a better job than I'm going to do, and on something critical like avionics, I really just felt better about having that done by somebody who's done it before and knows what they're doing. My level of avionics have been component level installs through the years, not entire systems. And I could have worked my way through it and I'm sure it would have been fine, but there's just tricks of the trade that people that do it all the time and know what they're doing, they're gonna know certain tricks, certain things, certain ways things should be done that I'm not gonna know. So I'd rather it be done right. And the thing about avionics is it's hard to rewire and redo things after it's already been done. It's a lot more work to do later on. So. I thought right out of the gate, let's just get it done right. Called my buddy Rob and I said, interested in this project? He said, absolutely, let's do it. So to start out, let's just talk about what I've got going on. A lot of this was covered in a previous episode when I designed the panel. If you wanna see how I did all of that work, uh, go watch the panel episode. But briefly, I've got two Dynon Skyview HDX 1100s. And uh, I've got a center stack here consisting of a GTR 200B comm radio, just a single comm in my setup. And then I've got uh, some buttons to control a couple of things. I've got all of my breakers here and then all of my switches here. Autopilot panel and heading uh, barometer and altitude bug panel here. And then over on the left side, I've got my master switch, my two ignition switches. Those are breaker switches since the uh, I'm doing the dual light speed ignitions and they're going straight to the battery there. They're on their own bus effectively, each one. So those are, uh, I believe, what are those? Five amp, I believe, breaker switches. I could be wrong. I can't read it from here and I don't remember at the moment. Got an ident button up here. And over here we've got my uh, ELT on test uh, control panel here. Alternator breaker. I have to still laser etch. It's not marked right now. This was a change and it was added after the fact. This was at a different location. So I'll need to take this panel off, put it on my laser and etch alternator right there. Got a Garmin USB uh, power supply. And then this, these USBs here go to each display. That's for updating firmware, map updates, databases, and so on. My stick grips, I'm using uh, Pioneer grips. These are pretty nice. They are 3D printed. I did some work on these. With the 3D print, you can see the layer lines. And I went in and sanded all these smooth, filled them with some fil lightweight filler, and then I painted them with a gray epoxy. Uh, but basically, I've got trim up and down. There is a left and right on the hat switch, which I don't have a use for at the moment. Just trim up and down. I've got my red button is my autopilot disconnect. I've got my push to talk back here. And these two buttons here go into uh, Dynon general purpose inputs, which I don't think I have configured yet. I don't really know yet what I want to use them for. I have some use for them at some point. A couple of wires still poking out here. I'm not completely done. This is for a cabin light. I'm going to run some LED strips probably on these diagonals here. And that's what this wire is for. I've also got a cabin light that's going to go back in the baggage area back there and the cabin lights are controlled by this cabin light button right here. This is for an LED cob strip, which I'm gonna put underneath the brow of the panel to illuminate the panel. Um, that's gonna be controlled with, I have a dimmer switch here, which currently is also connected to some post lights to kind of help light up the buttons and breakers and whatnot. Now on the other side of the panel is all the guts. And uh, there's a lot going on here, but not as much as other installations. I, I don't have a lot of stuff that a lot of fellas I see put in here. So 
it could be worse. <laughs> but but Dynon is really easy to install because of their SV net. Everything can daisy chain on the SV net. And then you've just got your EMS has got your big bundle going out to all your sensors and your general purpose inputs and so on. So anyways, yeah, we got one screen here. Uh, these are the uh, altitude and the heading bug panels here. Of course, my comm, all my switch and breaker bus stuff is down there. I do have a CO monitor, a Guardian CO monitor going into a general purpose input on the Dynon. So if I get uh, any excessive levels of CO, I will get a visual alert and an audio alert from the Dynon. Um, negative bus, uh, master bus here. There's the, the uh, Garmin uh, USB that I talked about, the ELT. Um, breaker for the alternator coming up. The way I wired my alternator, there's a couple ways you could do the shunt. I chose to do it, run the wire, come up from the alternator, comes to one side of the breaker, out of the breaker, to my shunt, one side, out of the shunt, to the bus. This method, I will get zero amps indication when everything is powered up, like right now. I won't be showing a negative draw. I'll just be showing zero amps. As Soon as I fire up the engine, that's gonna give me the output of the alternator into the system. So when the battery needs charging, we're gonna see that going and we're also gonna see the current draw to all the avionics ignition system and so on. So zero amps as it sits, I, I start to see my amps when I'm running. I could have run it off the bus and then I would have gotten a negative value and a positive. Um, I don't know, I just chose it this way. I could change it if I want to just by flipping some of these wires around from the bus to and from that later if I want to, but I don't really think I'll, want to do that or see a need. Uh, let's go over to the other side. Coming over here, uh, so again, these are my breaker switches here for my uh, ignition system. I've got my uh, starter button going to the starter relay, and then my master switch here, uh, that's all going down to the master solenoid, which we'll look at the battery and the master solenoid down there in a moment. While we're here looking at the ignition stuff, um, so as I mentioned, I have these five amp breaker switches. And the way I've wired my light speed, the light speed can have, um, well, it's supposed to have some LED lights like I've got up here. This one happens to be for low fuel and then my battery faults. I didn't want to do LED lights. I was starting to run out of room and it was just starting to get cluttered with a bunch of lights everywhere. So I chose to use uh, general purpose input pins on the Dynon to indicate when the ignitions are on and functioning. So as an example, if I turn the left one on, I come over here, these two indicators here, it says on, it goes to green. Here comes the right side, on and goes to green. If either box fails in flight, uh, I will get a warning here and I'll also get an audio alert. Now, one thing I'm doing with my ignition systems, the left ignition is running off of the main battery, which is right here. So this breaker switch goes straight from the main battery up to this breaker switch, straight to the left ignition. It bypasses the master bus, and that's for safety. You don't wanna have your master bus go down for some reason, then you lose your ignition. So it's its own independent run straight to the battery. By the way, if you're seeing this fuel tank here, this is coming in an episode. This is when I did my first engine run. Uh, so you're probably wondering what that's all about. We'll talk about that in a future episode. The right ignition, is operated one of two ways. In its current state right now, it is wired also to the main battery, okay? But it goes through this ignition backup switch right here. So with the ignition backup switch in the off position, the right ignition is operating from the main battery. If by some chance I had a main battery failure charging failure, something causing the main battery and bus to go down. I still wanna keep the engine running. So I have a backup battery, this little EarthX backup right here. That's wired also to the switch. This is a double pole, single throw switch. And on the other pole, if I flip this into the on position, I get on on the right side ignition and that's because I've now, and this is still in the off position, so I'm now pulling power from the backup battery to the right side ignition, independent of what's going on over here. So that's a safety feature in case 
I have a, a pretty big failure on my main battery or its bus, and that all goes down. Not even the bus, because the master bus, as I mentioned, is separate. So essentially, a maybe a charging system failure or a battery failure. Uh, I have the ability to come over here, flip that right ignition on, and um, operate off the right side. And that might even be something I just do. Uh, I might just, every now and then, or every other flight, I might just run it off of the right side. Uh, one, to check the, keep, you know, keep the function of the switch checked. And two, to just put a little, put a little work through that battery. And just as a method of just kind of testing that my system always works. But that's how I'm running my ignition system. Now on this backup battery, because I want to keep it isolated, I can't just connect the positive side of this battery to the positive side of this battery for charging. So the way I do it is I have a wire, you can't see it, but there's a wire that comes off of this side of the master solenoid. Basically it's pre-master solenoid. Coming off the positive side of the battery, I'm also tapping off of that through a 10 amp isolation diode to the positive side of this battery. So this battery will get charged through this, but it cannot backfeed its power back into here. So if I ended up with a extremely low volt or zero volt situation here at this battery, my backup battery will not backfeed into the system. It will still retain its charge to function the, uh, to operate the right side ignition. Now, because of that isolation diode, there is a slight voltage drop across that diode. It's about, I think, 0.5 to 0.8 tenths of a volt. And if we come up here to my voltages, you'll see the top one is, is my main voltage, 13.2, and the lower one is 13.7. Now in this case, it's reversed. The, the main battery is lower because I'm running everything off the main battery right now. And so my voltages are dropping, but notice the split. Uh, my main battery is, or my backup battery is not dropping at all because it's really not being used at this point. In normal operation, when the alternator is running, I'll see about 14.2 to 14.5 volts on my main battery, and I'll see about 13.9 on my backup battery. And that difference is, again, because of the voltage drop across that isolation diode. Looking at my switches here, you can see I've got avionics, nav lights, strobe lights, landing lights, taxi lights, recog lights, wig wag, fuel pump, and then again, my ignition backup. Avionics is pretty simple. That's a uh, basically powering the whole avionics bus through a 30 amp avionics breaker. Uh, nav lights, self-explanatory, same with strobe. Landing lights, yes. Now taxi lights, I have a wire coming off that switch going down here. I'm going to be putting a 20 inch light bar between the landing gear mounting points. It's gonna sit right there and I'm gonna have it pointed angled down just a little bit. And that's gonna give me clear illumination straight ahead for taxiing. I'll also use it for landing as well but that'll be its own light that I can activate here. Recog lights, those are going to be the lights in the Aerosport wingtips that I'll have. I did buy with the Aerosport wingtips the option to put the lights in the tip. Now I also have the RANS landing lights, which you can see there. There's a better view right there. But I'll also have these other Baja Designs LED lights in the Aerosport tip. I'm calling those my recog lights. Um, really just to give them a separate name and a separate switch so that I can activate them independently. Wigwag, uh, that just activate, that basically um, goes out to my uh, lights out at the landing lights and operates the wigwag feature of those. And fuel pump, self-explanatory, goes down to my fuel pump here. And then we already talked about the ignition backup. So that's my switch setup. Up here, I have a row of push buttons. You know, I... I didn't really need some of this stuff, but I figured why not take advantage of it. Um, I have a pilot push to talk on the left side, a co-pilot push to talk over here. Now, yes, I have them here as well, but I have had cases where my push to talk on my yoke has failed and I didn't have a way to key the mic quickly uh, without going into the menu and setting up on the Garmin uh, 200, you can set up one of these buttons to be a push to talk. So this is just kind of a backup in case I get a button failure or something and I need to push to talk quickly, I can come up here and do that. The DSC-1 and DSC-2, those are discrete inputs for the Garmin 200 that you can program to control various things. I don't have them set up for anything at the moment. Well, I might, let's see, I have, okay, I have DSC-1 set up for flip-flop and DSC-2 is not set up for anything, but you can go in the Garmin and you can program those to do just extra features. 
Uh, here's the cabin light that we talked about earlier. Here's the dimmer knob. Camera record. This is a button that I can push. I'm building a basically a camera controller for my either GoPros or I might use some Insta360 uh, action cams. I want to be able to have my cameras. I'm going to put some out on the wings, possibly one out on the tail. I want to be able to come up here and push one button and they all start recording. Push that button again and they stop recording. I don't like controlling the cameras through apps. Sometimes you don't get connectivity and it, there's latency. I want to know when I push that, they start recording. So I'm going to be building a camera controller and installing it behind the panel. And those are going to go out to all of the cameras. On the Dynon, I've got my 50% engine screen configured and set up at the moment. It's pretty basic. We've already seen some of the things here. Uh, one thing that you'll see is I have a flap position indicator. And if I pull my flap handle, you'll see that goes from zero to 40 degrees in all of the increments. So zero, there's 10, 20, 30, and 40. That's in an upcoming episode where I discuss uh, the reason that I put a flap uh, position indicator in and <clears throat> also how I did it. But basically the, the whole point of it was so that I could get some indications on the Dynon for things like if I exceed my VFE speed, I'd like to be able to be yelled at and told that I'm a dummy and the Dynon will do that for me. So that was one of the reasons. And then secondarily, so that I could get uh, individual calibrations for the angle of attack sensor at the discrete uh, flat positions, zero through 40. Back here, we have the uh, Dynon ADS-B box. We have the transponder box. We have my ELT, and then we have the Atahars. Now, originally, the Atahars was mounted right here in the center on the tray that I made. And I ended up changing that because it was much easier for me to run a long SVNet cable to it via, I have an SVNet breakout down here where the autopilot servos are. I had an extra port available and I thought, why not run that thing down back here? And what that's gonna allow me to do is my, my uh, pedo and AOA lines don't have to come cross through here, come up here and go behind the panel. They can just go right there. And then my static ports, I can just pop one in somewhere right here and one on the other side if I want as well. Keeping the Atahars back here lets all that plumbing, the airline plumbing, kind of stay out of the way back here where I don't have to fuss with any of this stuff going all up and around here. Now, in order for that to work, this tail cone starts to angle up at this station right here. So all I did is I bought one of Rand's uh, magnetometer mounts that they sell for the Garmin magnetometer, which has this angle already kind of preformed into it. And I just modified it to make it a little bit bigger. I put a bigger plate on it so that it would fit the footprint of the Atahars. I also did the same thing for my transponder. Not that I needed it to be at a certain angle, but just it was an easy way to mount the transponder to the floor. I have a comm antenna right here. Again, I'm single comm, so that's all I really need is this one right here. I've got my uh, Dynon GPS antenna mounted right here. And then back here, I have my ELT antenna. Underneath the aircraft, I have the two uh, antennas for, oh, where are they? We have one here. That's, I forget, that's either for the ADS-B box or the transponder. And that one back there, again, I'm not sure which, it's one or the other. But I did a uh, Rami blade style down here. The reason for that is if I'm going to be operating off airport and I might come across, scrub some brush or something, I don't want the little wire antenna ones. They get hung up on stuff. This is going to be far more durable and it's going to be able to kind of push away any brush or anything that might happen to kind of rub up against the bottom there. So that goes over basically the firewall aft, the entire avionics and electrical system.